Hello my dudes, what's up? How's it going? Welcome back to Minecraft, Mine Colonies Byzantine. The sun behind me. Oh man, what a beautiful day to be hanging out on the colony. Now we've got a few things to fix here and there on the colony and today we're going to be going all the way. We're going to be seeing if we can get our builder's huts to level 5. That's going to mean we can start getting other buildings to level 5, which is really going to be the crowning jewel on a lot of our buildings. Now getting a building to level 5 is no easy feat and in Byzantine style pack it's even crazier. There's lots of very expensive materials required to get these buildings to level 5. So we're going to be doing it case by case and focusing on the most important buildings first. But let's jump in and show you what's going on. Alrighty, here we go. So I've been looking at your tips in the comment section and once again, a massive thank you for putting these in because they really do save my life a lot of the time. Now you guys have mentioned that there is a sort button in the warehouse and I'm thinking, okay, there's a sort button. Oh my God, yes there is. How did I miss this? Boom, warehouse stock sorted and like that. No middle clicking around the, oh my God, Lots of cucumber seeds in here, but no middle clicking around these different racks. Now, with a button, you can sort all of the racks. Oh man, this has probably streamlined things massively. In fact, let's go upstairs to see how many racks are empty now. Oh my god, yeah, loads of empty racks up here. This is amazing news. Well, actually, not that many empty racks, but sorting these things out has really helped us a lot. And this is going to make tracking down different items and objects that we need for certain things so much easier. So boom, there we go. Top tip, you can sort the warehouse. Speaking of warehouses, looks like the warehouse courier hut over there has gotten up to, well, level one or two. Amazing news. So what else is happening around the colony? Let's take a look at the clipboard. Oh, so the builder still needs that blue carpet. That should happen in the background. And likewise, Molly Moo is desperately seeking this purple carpet. But the dyer now knows how to make purple and blue dye. The flower shop has the means to make those flowers. And the miner will be getting lapis. But that reminds me actually, yeah, there's something I want to do over at the mine. Now basically our miner is going right down to bedrock basically and digging out massive, massive tunnels. And let's take a look at those tunnels. Ooh, I always love doing that. So cool. But let's take a look and see how sprawling this place is because, oh my god, if we open up the mini map, in fact, no, the other mini map. Yeah, this will give us, oh wow, look at this. So we can see a view of our colony with all of the claimed chunks. And it even gives us the waystones as well. So Byzantine Hills. Over here, it's very small text, but promise you, that's Byzantine Hills. The Drunken Eagle, Home, Library of Stingria, Braven Boulevard, Constance Genopal, that's the name of the colony. That's all really cool. And the military district over here makes me realize we want one more waystone, probably over here, which is going to be the Docklands. But yeah, very cool. And the mine doesn't sprawl too much. What's Jello Slunter doing down here? So yeah, basically, the big problem we have with the mine is, while he's digging these things out, ooh, that's a problem too. We're going to fix this with some wood. That's not going to be a problem later on, is it? No. But yeah, as the miner is digging things out, he's getting a lot of materials. He's getting ores, valuable things we need, but he's also digging up all of this ugly deep slate. So what we want to do is change the miner's level to a level where he's going to get us more cobblestone, which is something we can use a bit better around the colony. So is this the uh, the main shaft? Yeah, it is. So let's go and see if we can change his level. So here we go. We're over at the miner's hut now. What's inside the inventory here, actually? Wait, what's this? A resource scroll. Did I put that in there by accident? Well, I've got it back now. Oh my god, whoa, whoa! What have you found, Aurora? You've got... <laughs> whoa! Why is she running around with a diamond? Hey, come back here! Come back here, you! Don't run away with the diamonds. That's the good stuff. Oh no, wait, she's putting it into the warehouse. Very good. Didn't suspect she was going to steal that at all. No. Ooh, you got you got to watch out for these five-fingered colonists. I mean, they all have five fingers, but what I mean is these, uh, you know, these stealing, stealing colonists. Oh man, I love seeing those buildings go up in the background. So what we're going to try and do is go to settings and see if we can get the max depth to be something a little bit higher. Minus 100 is very deep. So we're going to go to a level where there is cobblestone. Now we're going to have to actually calculate this by going down the shaft and stopping as soon as it becomes deep slate. So here we go. 
Let's go down, and we can look through the ladder to see when the cobblestone becomes deep slate. Cobble, 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 cobble. I sound like a turkey. Cobble, no, stone, 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 stone. So we want stone, basically, because stone, stone, stone. Oh, yeah, now this is where it starts to become deep slate. So we want to go one level higher than this. Yeah, this is the level that we want to start digging out at. So what level is this? How can we tell? F3. Oh my god, that's a lot of options. But somewhere around here, it's going to tell us what level we're at. Okay, so we're at level 7. Good to know. So now we can go over to the mine and set his maximum level to dig to to be just above that. So we're going to go... Ooh, I think level 10 sounds about right to me. Max depth, wait, minus... Minus 1. Oh, weird. So we can't set the max depth to be anything less or anything higher than minus one. So we're going to stick at minus one because there's a reasonable amount of stone at that level anyway. He will use shears, but also we're going to change his fill block. We can finally have a use for all of that deep slate we've compiled in the warehouse. This will take about a year to load. But here we go. We're going to set deep slate, cobble deep slate to be specific. Yeah, here we go. Cobble Deep Slate is now going to be the fill block. So all of those blocks that he's dug up, he's now going to fill in with Cobble Deep Slate. And that's good. It means we don't have to rely on the miner finding cobblestone to keep going. That's going to really help him out. And also, we've got days and days and days worth of Cobble Deep Slate in the warehouse. Amazing. That's a huge fix. Make sure you do that in your mines at home. Okay, amazing stuff. And we're going to keep the ball rolling on the tips that you guys have been dropping in the comment section. I can't remember the names of all of these tips because there were so many, but they went into my brain. At least the tips did, but your names didn't. Now, one way we can fix the farmer, basically you don't have to actually pause this guy at all. What you can do is manually turn off some of the fields. So you see here it's got the fields that this guy is working as wheat, olive, melon and garlic. So if we change it from automatic to manual, we can turn off the melon field. Oh, lightning, lightning. Now, I do love the colony when the rain is happening, because the fog just looks so atmospheric. Oh, man, yeah, take a look at this. This looks beautiful. Beautiful rain. But I am going to sleep through this if I can, because a thunderstorm is dangerous. We don't want any dudes to get struck by lightning. And fantastic stuff. Another sunny day on the colony. What are you doing on the roof? Oh, my God. These, these wandering traders are a real menace. Honestly. So yeah, do remember that in here you can go to the fields and you can turn off and turn on manually the fields that you want worked. But we're going to do the same for the other farmer as well because while we've got way too many melons, we're actually going to kind of run out of things like uh, potatoes and carrots and wheat because they are used in raising farm animals. So over here to the fields manual and we'll make sure that wheat is on okay but for now we will turn off the lettuce because we've got loads and loads of caesar salad so with those configured we can unpause the worker he'll get back to work and we'll do the same for the farmer over on the other side of things oh baby progress and fixing problems nothing feels better than a colony that works like a well-oiled machine and Sklerbitha can rejoice because she can finally get back to doing what she does best. That's right, it's farming. So what else is on our list of things to do? Well, let's see if we can find the Garden of Hoobies Waystone. There she blows. Yeah, that's right. You work those fields, Sklerbitha. You work them. And we're going to go up and take a look at the Enchanter's Tower. Oh, wait, hang on a sec. Who's this? Ivana Mahogany? I Ivana get you in the colony more like. We need baked potatoes. Do I have any on me? Not enough. We'll give her a couple for now and go and collect some more. But who else is in here that we want to get into the crew? So Aqua Lich. Yes, please. What do you cost? Eight diamonds. Do I have that many diamonds on me? No, I've got six. But I reckon there's going to be some in the computer. Have a couple of taters on me. Roy! <laughs> How's it going, Roy? Roy Bits, man, that's a really, really cool name. I love that a lot. What do you want? Cakes. Well, I can make cakes now. We've got lots of eggs, lots of flour, all of the things we need. So that shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to go and grab these bits and see if we can get these guys in. Also, who's this? It's Toby Vink. How's it going, Tobes? Oh, and books. Very cheap. So I'll go and grab these bits. 
have myself an eternal steak, and grab them in. All right, colonists, where are you? Father Christmas has come a little bit late. Wait, Gattaca Stoney, you're another guy. What do you want? Honeycomb, now I think I actually have some honeycomb, yeah. So we can get a big old session of getting dudes in. There's 13 honeycomb. Where's the next dude? Is that Roy? We need Roy. Where's Roy? I have to know that Roy is safe. Uh, it's mixed a piss nut. <laughs> okay. Do I have... Yeah, I've got a stack of lapis on me. Amazing. Oh, man, we're getting all the dudes in. This is amazing. Now, as always, if you do become a Patreon member or a YouTube member, you can find the names post on either the community page on YouTube or the Patreon post on Patreon and add your name to the list of dudes that can arrive in the colony just like Roy Bits. There's some cake, my friend. Don't run off with it. And Ivana Mahogany. More like Ivana get you in the colony. There's the potatoes. And we're good. Was that everybody? Is that all of the boxes ticked? Was there somebody upstairs up here? Yeah, of course. Aqua Lich. The diamonds. Boom. Okay, a nice little haul there. Lots and lots of fresh dudes. Now what they're going to do is, if they don't get a job, if they can't become a knight, or a druid, or an archer, they will go to school. And, well, not school, the library, which is like school for adults. Your researchers made a breakthrough. They now understand fear. Yeah, you, you, you're damn right they do. I'll crack the whip on these mother truckers if they step out of line. So let's pop along to the Enchanter's Tower now, over here in the church. Again, what a fantastic build. Spamanti has outdone himself, and I cannot wait to see this go up in the levels. But, what's that noise? What are you doing? God, who knew enchanting was such a loud affair? Anyway, here is our resident deity, Dark Hoobies, doing so what are you what are you doing? What are you even doing? In fact, that's a good point. What does an enchanter's tower do? Well, they've got some custom recipes, so the enchanter can turn ancient tomes into enchanted books. No way! That's amazing! So when we get these ancient tomes from the raids, which we actually do, we can turn them into enchanted books. She also knows how to make ultra safe Connolly teleport scrolls from a few bits and bobs. Man, that's the weirdest song. Now she also has gather targets. What does this mean? Well, yeah, basically it's, ooh, the enchanter will go to these targets, gather experience from the workers that work there. I'm not sure if she steals the experience or if she just, you know, gives it back, but she uses that experience plus the ancient tomes to make the enchanted books, so it's not really a free craft. Anyway, how is the school and library doing over here? Are they level one yet? No, the school is still level zero and the library over here still needs to be built. Well, Ambriel didn't have a job, so we're gonna cancel the build and get Ambriel working on this instead. And there's a couple of things we'll need to teach our dudes how to make. But again, because these are buildings inside a building, they're very cheap builds. And we'll also get Ambriel over here because it looks like Molly Moo is, yeah, a bit overworked. Now nighttime is fright time, no raid tonight by the looks, which is pretty lucky, but we'll wait until it ticks over and the colonists get to bed so they get a good night's sleep. It's not the quickest though, because our colonists have to walk pretty far to get to where they live, which is not great, but not terrible, which is also why I think we need to spend an episode investing in infrastructure, get some more rails around the colony so our guys can zip around and get home much quicker which is going to mean more aqueducts, but an aqueduct without water and with rails is in fact actually a viaduct. So there we go, that's the builders hard at work. Now what were we going to do this episode? That's right, the main thing we wanted to do was get at least one builders hut up to level 5, and we're going to focus on the boys because the boys builders huts are already level 4. There we go, right, so what are the material requirements for upgrading these buildings to level 5? Here we go, now this is where things could get crazy and we might have to actually go to the end. But it looks like we actually don't. That's crazy. So usually as a loose kind of frame of reference, some buildings require bits from the end or the nether to get upgraded. Now Byzantine is a little bit different. It kind of breaks those rules. In fact, the only tricky thing here is a block of gold, but that's not tricky. It's just expensive. And we do actually have those numbers. So we can definitely get the builders to build their own huts. Leo, this is your hut and you're gonna build this. And we're also going to get Jensen to build his own hut too. So we're going to leave those to brew in the background. Now, Leo and Jensen do still have other jobs that they're going to be working on, so we'll leave them to those, and fingers crossed we can come back and see if the builder's hut is level 5. 
That's going to be really cool. Now, I want you guys in the comment section right now. Oh, amazing, the library's done. I want you guys in the comment section right now to let me know which building do you think should be the first building we get to level 5. So the big contenders are the farm for more fields. However, we're not at a shortage of food, so maybe not. Also, you can't see it right now, but behind the insulate, the university. That could be level 5 as well, and that would be huge. We could get some level 5 researchers, and there's some crazy level 5 researchers. There's also the dyer's hut. We need loads more recipes over there, so getting that thing to level 5 would be really helpful. And also guard towers. Getting a guard tower to level 5 means that these guys can use enchanted armor, and that's going to make them a force to be reckoned with. But the list goes on and on. The hospital, a school, a library, one of the houses, the insulate put, for example. That could be level 5 as well. Let me know what you think we should be getting to level 5 first, and I will like and heart the comments. Well, okay, so the school and the library being built means that we can actually, I think, probably do some more research. So over to the library of Shindria, and let's see what's open. Research. So nothing is in progress at the moment, but these new schools and libraries, oh man, amazing, means we can actually invest in the backpack research we want to do last time. Yeah, here we go, deep pockets. Now, extra slots in the inventory. It's going to be huge for our dudes. Really, really, really huge. We can also learn diligent. I'm just going to go through as many of these things as I can, especially since I've got the books on me. Diligent, that's going to be good. So that's two of four. What else? In combat, maybe, perhaps? Something here we can do to make our dudes a bit more, you know, beefy. Ooh, check it out. Panoramics. Druids request magic potions to unlock new abilities. And that's a really good point. We don't actually have an alchemist's hut. But I want to look into the alchemist's hut. How do we make it? Do we need to do a research for it? Where does it live? Does it have its own Byzantine building? That could be big as well, because it might not, you know? Here it is, the Alchemist's Tower, and it does look like it requires a research. So, a brewing stand, wood, and a build tool, that's not tough to make. But the research to actually unlock the Alchemist's Tower, that could be. Well, let's go back in here and see what it is. <coughs> you okay, Haltermain? Need a, a lozenge? So, the Alchemist's Tower, where could this be? Now, I, I feel like it should be in combat, because it's basically only for combat potions. Aha, look at this. So I have found it. It's more scrolls, which unlocks Open the Nether, which gets us the Nether Mine. Then we can get Magic Potions, which unlocks the Alchemist. Oh, and check this out. There's also Ocean's Heart. That means fishers can find treasure. Very cool. But we're also going to do another research. We're going to do a civilian research called Lifesaver. Two more HP on all of our dudes. It's going to be big. So hay bales, paper, Lapis, and an ancient tome. So we return to the university with all the bits we need to do this research. Now it was in civilian for Lifesaver, that's the hay bales, that's the third research, and the final research, which is also in civilian. Where is it? Scroll down, no, it wasn't civilian. Was it technology? Here we go, more scrolls. Oh wait, no. Oh, so we're locked again. We need the Enchanter's Tower to be level 3. So much to do this episode, but it's okay. This is all progress, and progress is great. Isn't that right, Phileas Wolf Dragon? What can I do for you? Sunflowers. Do I have sunflowers? Yeah, I do, obviously. Let's get you in. Yeah. Welcome to the crew, and he already became a druid. Wow, quite the glow up, my friend. Loving that chrome dome. What's that up there? Who are you? Zelda the Tasty. Okay, well, how tasty are you? Tasty enough to be in the colony, that's for sure. Boom, amazing. Oh, man, we are getting dudes in thick and fast. So we're going to head up and make sure that the Enchanter's Tower is being upgraded. But this is going to be a big episode because we need the Builder's Huts to be level 5. We're looking for the Enchanter's Tower. If we can get that to level 3 before next episode, we can do a bit of research. That's going to be big, too. Because, yeah, the Nethermine and the Alchemist's Hut are the two gateways to very high-end elite colonies indeed. Yes, here we go. Man, we've got so many build projects to take care of, but the Enchanter's Tower, build options, oof. Now, gaze upon this. 
Not exactly a cheap build, a framed block of raw gold and another enchanter's tower. We already have one of those here though, very weird. Well, we'll upgrade this, build another one of those and we should be okay. And again, while they are expensive materials, there aren't that many required, so it shouldn't take too long to go up. So do you know what? I reckon maybe it is time. Let's time lapse the build of these builders huts going up from levels four to five. We've taken care of a lot of things around the colony this episode. We've done a lot of TLC, got loads of new dudes in, got some really essential research on the go. Wait, what are these bees doing? It's like a, a big bee and a little bee? No idea what they're doing over there at the university. Maybe Dark Hoobies knows. But yeah, let's watch these builders huts go from level four to five, because that's going to be really huge. Getting a first level five building is going to be massive. So the builders huts to level five, our first level five buildings on the colony, a very big moment. I had to pull Jensen away from his previous projects, which means we'll have to get somebody else to do the warehouse and the dyer's hut up to level two. But you know what? The builder's hut is way more important. And again, upgrading these buildings is really quick, because guess what? The builder doesn't need to go anywhere. He's building his own building up to level five, and that's really, really, really quick to achieve. And they're good looking buildings as you'd expect as well. From a level five building, yeah, this really does fit the ticket. And now that these buildings are level five, it's time to set our sights on what other buildings we want around the colony to be level five. It's gonna be an expensive endeavor, but a very important one. Oh man, momentous day. So let's take a look and see exactly how amazing a level five building is inside. And okay, yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. Now, I didn't realize this before, but I think there's a second level up here. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, so there's more racks up here, more space. This is where the gold block went, I see, and a potted plant, delicious. Lovely, very lovely. But yeah, very cool. So there's loads of rack space in here, not that much extra, but it's a pretty cool looking building. And it's mirrored again over here with Jensen's building right next to it. And this is really, really, really good news. Now we can get any building we want up to level five, the maximum level, to get the most bang for our buck. So like I said, do keep your suggestions coming in in the comment section about what building you reckon should be level five. The library, the hospital, the restaurant, the warehouse even, maybe even the town hall. Do let me know what you think, but a massive thank you for watching this episode of Mine Colony's Byzantine. Once the Enchanter's Hut is level three, we can do the research, which means next episode, we can hopefully build the Nether Mine and perhaps the Alchemist's Tower. But until then, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, consider becoming a member, and until next time, take care.